You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 492 for Sunday the 3rd of March 2024. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chum Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there Jane. Hello there, Michelle. We're in March. I can't believe we're in March already. Where's that gone? I know. I had a funny thought on the 29th. If I post a Facebook memory on the 29th, will I only see it every four years? Ooh. You're going to have to try that then, aren't we? You're just going to have to post on the 29th just for the the fun of it. Just for funsies and see if it turns up. The problem is, though, then you've got to remember either next year or four years' time what you've done to check it. Yeah, but I check my memories every day. It's one of those things. You can guarantee you'd forget all the (laughs) It'd be just that thing, wouldn't it? You've you've set this this plan in motion and then this time next year it would completely be forgotten about. It's one way of uh, reducing my age a little bit. If I'd have been born on the 29th, I only have a birthday every four years. Yeah, but then presents, come on. Yeah, I'd rather take being a (laughs) 25-year-old. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with this uh, facebook a little experiment I did mm-hmm. anyway. So how's you in the world of life? You had a little mini break investigating the uh, pickle, I gather. Yeah, we had a little... We love going up to York. I know you, you kind of like York as well. It's got a lovely vibe up there. And it was just an excuse to have a, have a quick night away. And we were exploring around, found some lovely little quirky little shops we were looking in. And we've passed this shop numerous times before and I went oh we're gonna have a look in because it kind of reminded us of some of the shops that we saw when we were in Bruges and Copenhagen on our cruise back in September and it's got all the German glass in there and a lot of the the wooden Christmas sea vibe things as well beautiful stuff I mean I don't buy glass ornaments because I know I would break them um, <laughs> but yeah absolutely beautiful stuff in there and then I saw the pickles and I thought I've got to take photos because I know there's this weird thing that there's this German pickle thing, but you talk to Germans and they don't seem to know about it. So I'm very confused by it. So I thought, if you know, you know, I've got to grab some photos. Well, I spoke to my dear, dear, dear friend, Jo, who is a German teacher, and she's constantly taking her children at secondary school away to Germany every year on residential trips, etc. And mm. she's actually said... She's got family in Germany herself as well. That a lot of German families have taken on this tradition because of Disney. (laughs) (laughs) That seems about right, doesn't it? I have to say, the glass manufacturer, we did watch a programme somewhere or YouTube, I can't remember. Absolutely fascinating story behind this particular glass manufacturer. And if I could remember the name, or more important, if I could pronounce it, I would let you know. But I can't. So there you go. I did get told it was uh, inside the factory with Greg Wallace and they actually did the pickle-making thing on that TV show. So I'll be uh, Uh, looking that one up and watching that, no doubt. So moving away from Mm. being in a pickle, I'd like (laughs) to thank everybody, including your good self, for the kind wishes, the cards. I got some lovely flowers from Jane, Alstromero, which happened to be a favourite. Um, I am doing a lot better. I am still poorly, poorly off off school at the moment, but things are improvement. The surgery went really well. And thank you for all the lovely messages. It's really made Mm. me feel loved. Yay. And nice to know that you're getting getting back to your normal self. Yeah. Uh, Well, it's normal normal as you can be, Shell, you know. As normal as I can possibly be (laughs) as a Disney fan. Exactly. Yeah. So we have a little bit of history for you this week. Let's crack on before we go on to our main discussion points. Yeah, I've actually got three bits, but two are kind of linked, so you'll see. So we're going to go real old school. We're going to go back to 1906 um, for the first piece. And this is the birthday of a guy called Don Novice. Now, he was born in jolly old England, so he's an Anglophile. He moved to the States in the 1920s, to pursue acting and singing as a career. He's actually a tenor. Um, He actually was on numerous films and on Broadway, and he made several recordings with his own orchestra. But in 1955, he co-created the script for the Golden Horseshoe Review at Disneyland. 
Now that we know the show ran forever up until like 1986, but Novice himself actually was in the production from its beginning um, until he retired in about 1964. So not only did he co-create it, he actually performed it as well. So that's the first little bit of Disneyland history. And then we're going to go on to a bit of movie history. So 1937, another day um, for a birthday. This is the birthday of Bobby Driscoll. So Bobby Driscoll was the voice uh, and actually the, the model for Peter Pan for the classic movie. But he also appeared in some live action Disney film, films as well. He was in the production of Treasure Island, playing Jim Hawkins. He was in a film called So Dear to My Heart. He was all also in Song of the South. That leads us on to the next piece, because Song of the South was filmed in 1946. And on this day in 1946, Bobby Driscoll was actually filming Song of the South. So therefore, he celebrated his ninth birthday on the set. And the director, Harvey Foster and Walt Disney, presented him with a birthday cake. Aww. Which I thought was really cute to have two bits of, of uh, history that it's linked so lovely. So there you go. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Right, well, moving away from history, mm. on the 28th of February, the International Flower and Garden Festival began at Epcot. Yay. And I haven't yet watched any video reviews of any of the new food items, but I have seen a lot of details and had people send me pictures of the sensational merchandise. And there's the good old classic of Spike the Bee back again on quite a lot of items this year. Mm. Now, a couple of people have mentioned when we talked about Spike the Bee before, where does the Disney link come in? Do you happen to know, Jane? I don't. That's bad, isn't it? He appeared in several 1940s, 1950 Disney cartoons and he was a tormentor of Donald Duck. Ah, uh, okay. It isn't just something that's been dreamt up. It is actually Disney going back into their archives and finding a character and sort of bringing him up to uh, readiness for the 21st century. Yeah. Well, you know, you... You've got these characters and it fits so well with the Flower and Garden Festival. Why not use them? Absolutely. Adult t-shirt with Spike the Bee on. It's on a yellow background. Personally, it's a pass older one, so I'll never be able to get one. And mm. I don't think I'm a friend of yellow. Yeah, yellow's a funny one, isn't it? You can wash it out a bit. It's very cute. And the flower pattern has a very beautifully placed hidden mickey with flower heads which it took me a while to notice but it's also got the out sort of outline of spaceship earth so it has got quite a few oh, disney nice. iconic nods to it so i do like yeah. that yeah festival of arts launched lug disney parks have had this friendship this business relationship with the lug company and they have mm. brought out these non-leather fabric type bags and mm. they have got a spike the bee one which is oh, classed nice. as a small bag and when they mean small it's probably about what two hands across so it's not massive right. 125 dollars no, and it's sort Ouch. of a creamy color and it's uh, a lovely sort of sage green color that's a pass holder exclusive they do have a larger one, which does have a lot of different pockets, which looks a lot more useful for being in the park. And that's 135 Wow. Lots of pins, but as neither of us are big pin people. Not particularly. I think it's one of those things with a pin. If you were there for the festival, it was it's a nice cheap memento, isn't it? Hmm. But I'm not big on pin pins as such. However... The mm. orange bird merch. Oh, my <laughs> word. I firstly want to know that in Creation Shop, there is this really large model of the orange bird. Can I have that when Flower and Garden's finished, please, Disney? Well, it's often the case, though, isn't it? When you go into some of the, the merchandise shops and you look at the decor and it's like, why well, don't they sell that? Or at least sell it off afterwards. But I'm assuming it will probably come out for future years, but... Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely little model of him, actually, to be fair. 
It's quite big, so it probably wouldn't fit in my suitcase. Probably not. I think you might have to pay for shipping. Just a bit. Damn. There's a lovely orange bird print, which coordinates with the print that's on this year's Dooney and Burke for the festival. It's beautiful. It's got that lovely sage green, the brightness mm. of the orange bird pops, and it also has Spaceship Earth on it. I would love one of those. There's your usual wonderful orange bird mugs, which couple up as an orange squeezer thingy. Oh, I thought okay. was quite, quite nice. Mm. There's the headband with the ears, which again are very nice. Mm. As I mentioned, there's the Dooney and Burke, which is so far out of my price range. It's <laughs> never going to be bought by me at the moment, so that's not happening. There's also a Loungefly mini backpack, mm. which is $88, which is really cute. You've got a bowl and half of the orange bird is popping out of it, which sort of protrudes behind a little zip pouch. And then you have the pattern, which is resplendent on also the ears. Mm. The only thing is with these lounge flies, they're just not big enough. I know, yeah. It is very cute, though. It is incredibly cute, but unless I'm in a theme pack, I don't wear a backpack, number one. Mm. I would much rather have the Dooney because it's more practical. But again, it's more money, so. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm... I'm... As much as I love the backpacks, they I always feel that wearing them on my back is a little bit open for people getting in it when they shouldn't do. So I'm a little bit self-conscious. So I much prefer a crossbody bag. But yeah, the crossbody for Dooning Book is gorgeous. Pretty the price tag isn't quite as gorgeous. $54.99 for the Orange Bird Magic Bland Plus. Mm. Cute as heck, but I still don't see... That showing me any value because I'd probably wear it for my holiday if I have a holiday and that would be it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, no, still not buying a magic band but the thing that's got my heart racing. Oh, The spirit jersey. I wondered if you might mention that, yeah. Oh, my word. On the front, instead of it being actually the orange bird, is a spaceship earth in orange and it's just so damn cute. And at first when I saw it, I thought it was going to be white. But it's a really nice light blue tie-dye pattern. I'm going to say it's like a marbly pattern, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's so gorgeous. And I love the orange and green colours on the back. It really pops. Yeah. The only thing that I don't like is the $79.99. Yeah, it's a pretty standard um, price though, isn't it, for a spirit jersey? I did see a while ago, I thought... Didn't we talk about them potentially phasing out spirit jerseys and bringing something out of their own? But well, obviously this... not, yeah. Yeah. So I might see if I can manage to uh, get hold of a small if it comes to Shop Disney. Mm. We'll see. Um, there's the plush, which you can get, which is really cute. It's reversible. Yeah. It has the date on. So for people who like to have the name and date of things, it's really good. And when you turn him inside out, it turns into Spaceship Earth. So you could use it as a ball, <laughs> which is just, just so cute. Yeah, yeah. It's a really cute T-shirt. Orange, you're glad you met me. I just think, yeah, but <laughs> why is it on white? I know, yeah. The fitted tea is nice. Nice though, the little peachy coloured orange that they've got for that's quite cute. That is lovely because it's got some icons from around the mm. pack down the a panel. But again, it's it's a sort of like loose round neck. Can't we have a scoop neck? We are ladies and if we have a decollage, it would be nice to, you know, have that decollage not hanging out of the T shirt, but hinted at a little bit more than just showing mm. my clavicle. <laughs> That reminds me of a really funny line from The Big Bang Theory where Amy was talking about her mum said, oh my word, I can show my clavicles off. And she said, well, couldn't your mum, wouldn't your mum let you? And she says, oh no, it's the devil's gateway. And I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> Sorry. Total digression there. But yes, very cute t-shirt. I do agree with you. I don't do baseball caps, but for, for me, it just doesn't, it just doesn't look right, does the pattern on the, it just reminds me of, other things and not the orange bird. Mm, yeah, I can get where you're coming from with that. So, and there's a, a pinny if you like doing a little bit of cooking. The apron is thirty four ninety nine, and the Dooney and Burke, the big shopper, is two nine eight. 
with a lovely oh. leather tag going all the way down to a 228 for a crossbody, which I still think's a lot of money. If you were going to argue over getting one, I'd pay the extra and get the shopper. Then you have the more domed handbag, which is, I've got that in a few styles. It's really, really nice. But then they end it off with something that is going to be nearly as hard to get hold of as the first figment popcorn bucket. The lug bag. $60. Mm. What's the bet? There's none in stock already. They're all on eBay for double the price. Yeah, I must admit, it is. It is cute. It's got that Disney Parks logo on it, and it's just it's kind of my size of bag as well. Yeah. There's some Pandora as well. Orange Bird has got himself on that, oh, wow. which looks really good. And there's a little flower and garden icon for there. So they've really gone to town with all of the different strands of merchandise that you could go and buy this year. And it's very Orange Birdy. A lot more of his design stuff than Spike the Bee. Yeah. Well, he is a very cute character, isn't he? We do love the orange bird. I've got to say that. I've got an, I've got him tattooed on my arm. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I talked about the button-up shirt. It's a rain spooner button-up, and that their fabric is normally really nice. That's $125. Wow. And I really do like that. Again, possibly a small, maybe a medium in that one. I don't know. I'll have a think. <laughs> and then a Christmas ornament. Yeah, because nothing says Christmas like Orange Bird coming out of, a pot, out of a plant pot. Absolutely. And then the standard festival trash cans, which I somehow need to get hold of and get in my uh, little collection. I'm not going to say, you know, you need to keep that collection up to date, don't you, Shell? Well, I do. I do. Because <laughs> if you miss one... Wow. Well, you won't get it again. No, nope. that's it. So that is it for the flower and garden discussion. I'd now like to hop over to a non-domestic USA park to Tokyo. Oh, okay. We're, we're globetrotting today. We are globetrotting because it is under 100 days away from the opening of Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney Sea. It actually opens on the 6th of June, 2024, and it is going to be, from what I have seen, Blooming amazing. It is looking rather good, isn't it? Makes you makes you makes you think, oh can't we have that over either at Paris or Disney World? You no, know, we we keep talking about fifth gates and extending parks and one thing and another, and it's like, look what they're doing over there. I know. They're hitting it out of the park in Tokyo. Mm. This is going to be located between the Arabian coast and the Lost River Delta. It's themed to a magical spring leading to a world of Disney fantasy. Oh, there's Aww. three areas inspired by Walt Disney and Animation Studios, Frozen, Tangled and Peter Pan. Mm. And then there's the all new Tokyo Disney Sea Fantasy Springs Hotel. Oh, of course, I was forgetting about that, yeah. So the concept art looks fantastic. It really does. There's some pictures of the food that you're going to be able to eat there. It looks amazing i i need to book a trip to tokyo i really really well, don't we do. all don't don't we all darling i mean but it is quite interesting that they've chosen peter pan mm -hmm. because we know and we are anticipating changes being made to the u.s peter pan attractions because we all know there is that scene that at some point they are going to change because of you know, how things were when the film was created and the ride created that are different. We've seen it this week with the reclassification of Mary Poppins from a universal film to a parental guidance film. Mm -hmm. So for them to pick Peter Pan, which is quite an old franchise, it just goes to show that it's one of those classic films, it's beloved, and the characters, particularly Tinkerbell, are getting quite a lot of love in this land. Yeah, well, it's interesting that they, they're airing away from the Lost Boys and calling it Lost Kids now, which mm. I don't know if I completely agree with. But, yeah, so there's a little bit of tinkering. I see what I did there, going, on, going along with things, isn't it? So, yes, yeah, so it'd be interesting to see when we actually get to uh, have a proper look around what, if anything, they've done to uh, this franchise. They are getting, oh, my word, this is just so exciting, and I really, really want this. They are getting a snuggly duckling. 
<laughs> yeah, just the name says it all, doesn't it, really? A snuggly duckling I want to eat there today. It does sound... It, it's just the wording, isn't it? Snuggly and duckling. Snuggly. Yeah. Snuggly duckling. It just makes me want to go and have a snuggly duckling meal now. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what's on the menu. To give you a rough idea, they have a Duckling Dream burger set and that is 1,440 yen. Now, for those of mm. you who can't instantly calculate that in your brain, it works out at $9.60. Wow. And for that, you get a Snuggly Duckling burger. Mm -hmm. You can get a salad or French fries and a soft drink. Mm. You can pay a little bit more and change the soft drink to Rapunzel's Magical Milk Tea. Mm. But that, to me, doesn't sound particularly expensive for, for a counter-service meal. No, absolutely not. I was quite surprised. At that. I, I'd seen the, the price tag of 1,400 yen and I've got, I've got no idea. So thank you for doing that maths for me, Michelle. My pleasure. They have a fried shrimp burger set, which, again, is the same price. The pricing for mm -hmm. most items in Tokyo does seem to be pretty static. And from friends yeah. I know who have been, they've all reported back to me, once you get there, the food, the everything is so much cheaper. Yeah. Interestingly, Interesting. yeah. they have a plant-based burger set as well. Oh, okay. Now, they have a caramel duckling muffin. <laughs> So yeah, with that little bis that little biscuit on top or whatever it is with a little duckling on. It's very cute. Yeah. And then they have a lemon and strawberry sweets ever after. And Aww. this is served in a frying pan. Yeah, I know. So cute. So it's cute. like Disney, you are hitting it out of the park. Can you change the toilets in Walt Disney World to the Snuggly Duckling? And I don't mind walking a bit further to go for a wee wee somewhere else behind Pinocchio. <laughs> that would be an idea, yeah. So while we're looking at some of the foods, over at Peter Pan's Neverland, they are getting some yummies as well because this Peter Pan's Neverland dining. Oh, okay. And this again looks so much fun. There's a Lost Kids snack box, which is butter curry chicken. It's so beautifully themed. It's seaweed fritters, banana chips, shrimp chips and chicken tenders. And the tenders mm -hmm. have got a butter curry flavour. Interesting. And there's a little brownie saying, look out, cook out. There's pixie dust <laughs> soda with a little star in it. It's very cute. But I think what most people are excited about is roast beef popcorn. Yeah, that's, that's, they have this thing, don't they, over in Tokyo, that they comb the flavour combinations that they pick for their popcorn are like nothing we'd get elsewhere. And it's it doesn't sound right, but I'm sure it's going to be absolutely scrummy. Yeah. 400 yen, which is about $2.60, which is absolutely nothing, no. really. But, yeah, so thinking of this, Jane, if mm. you were going to be the chef of popcorn, <laughs> yeah, what flavours would you look for? See, roast beef would actually work quite nicely for me because, I, I, you know, I do like me, me beef and me meat. Uh, anything dark chocolatey would work. Ooh. Dark chocolate and raspberry. That'd be quite a nice combo. So the popcorn is flavoured raspberry and it has a dark, dark chocolate drizzle. Yeah, but really dark. It's got yeah. To be proper dark chocolate. Yeah. Ninety percent dark. Yeah, definitely. That'd be interesting. Maybe a little bit of black pepper on top, or chili. <gasps> I'm gonna. Oh, you beat me to it, Shell. Strawberry and chili works really well. Oh, that sounded what? really good. Why haven't we got jobs making popcorn combinations for for Disney? I don't know. I can't eat it, so it's no good for me talking <laughs> about all this popcorn. Unfortunately, being a victim of uh, the gastrointestinal issues I have, popcorn is going to be off the menu for a very long time. Oh, and it's one you. of those places that you're just wandering around and you get that smell. And it just, mm. you know, particularly the caramel kush, I love caramel popcorn rather than the just pop type. Oh, Yeah, it's a combination of the smell that gets your taste buds going and then it's got 
it has that sort of I don't really I often go in with it oh no I don't really want any and somebody else will buy it and then slapping me hand because my hand's going into the bucket way more than it was supposed to because you think oh no it's not really for me and then you, you just have that one bite and all of a sudden it's that Moorish quality kicks in doesn't it yeah it's like that what what's that crisp product that comes in a cylinder once you pop mm. your cast up? Yeah. Same sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like before you know it, your hand's stuck halfway down the tube <laughs> because you're trying to get the last few out and you didn't use your brain of turning it upside down. Well, because when you're in that moment, your brain don't work, does it? When you're on full snackage. <laughs> Nothing um. else matters. Our good friends Kat and Lewis from Diz Down Under are counting down to their May adventure at Tokyo. I cannot wait for them to get back in touch with us and let Mm. us know about some of the amazing things that are available. If you want to hear us talk a little bit more about Tokyo or some other extended items that just didn't quite get squeezed in today's show, we have a March Patreon podcast coming out very, very soon. So hop on over to patreon.com forward slash Disney Dream Girls. And we would also like to thank each and every one of our Patreon supporters for helping us out by keeping mm-hmm. the show advert mm-hmm. free. If you want to catch more from us, you can find us on at Dis Dream Girls on Instagram, which is where we seem to be fairly active. You can also follow along the fun in the Disney Dream Girls podcast family where we are giving away at the moment a Mickey and Minnie cruise line magnet donated by the very beautiful Jane Phipps. Mm -hmm. And it's going to the most engaged members of the community. Mm. If you're not yet a member and want to share your love of Disney, whether it's sharing pictures of your collection, your past trips, your future trips... Your outfits, your handbags, we don't mind. We want to share with everybody. Hunt us down on Facebook. But anyway, until next time, it's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.